Welcome to part two on this Christmas Eve. One more time in Ned Walker. <clears throat> and for a Leperithos exploration. Well, I'm... Let me pull up. Ether cards. Three. Okay. Uh, you here to to help or give us more headaches because we don't have the look of a gleaner and I'm in no mood for idle chatter. When at the call. One of my colleagues is so exhausted he took a tumble and crashed into a pile of crates. Now I have a pack of marmots running loose. Your exchange with Arado has taught you about exhausted gleaners. Let me think, let me think. The, the re seeds should be at uh, 1058, cumin seeds. Seeds 1059, Snubbleberry 1060, and what, what were they? 1061. Ah! My head feels like it's stuffed with moco grass. Mm. Why more loads to take out than carry in? I do all this at once and risk, risk mixing it up. If someone mistakes the corth and carrots for the Garibanian credit, the carrots, then. Your exchange with Hiev has taught you about large shipments coming in and out of Labyrinthos. Ah, uh, you want to know what I'm doing? Hauling books? No, fauna. You didn't need hauling? I'll haul it. Every decade is so to take stock in Labyrinthos, you know? So, tidy up the inventory. Never seen an operation like this before, though. They just did one a few summers ago, that even. Then, with no warning at all, this mess gets dropped in a laps. Orders from on high, but then if I know the reason. Could be that they changed the layout, eh? Paying for the next big expansion. Your exchange with Dobbin has taught you about, about taking stock in Labyrinthos. Any luck, Amigos? What tale did the gleaners have to tell? Uh, taking stock, large shipments, and exhausted gleaners. So this grand operation began without warning, and every and for every item they bring in, they're sending more inventory somewhere else. Hmm. I would explain the haggard faces I'm seeing. You're right, the forum's definitely up to something. They're turning Labyrinthos upside down in the process. You would do well to learn more about what specifically the gleaners are being tasked to do as well. Do. As well as who has tasked them to do it. If you're a game member, I have an idea. You know, when the gleaners you question say something about escape marmots, perhaps if you were to help him capture, capture said creature, might be inclined towards a more friendly and enlightening conversation. In the meantime, I will turn my charms upon this gleaner here. You can compare notes afterwards. Happy hunting! Uh, you wish to help me find the marmots? There's nothing suitable to pay you for your service, but if you're offering the goodness of your heart, I'd be welcome to your assistance. Yeah, you can count on me. My name is Ironville, friend. The specialist in the collection of live specimens. That said, the capture of these Nungshin marmots is a, a trial of no desire to repeat. Grizzled mice, they call them. For mercy, there are no other marmot species of their tier 
on this tier at, at present, so there should be no mistaking our little fugitives. If you happen to, to catch any, stuff them in this sack. Gently, of course. Where to begin, you wonder? I've not seen any scampering around here, so we need to widen our search into the surrounding forest. In your guard, there are beasts out there that won't hesitate to prey on, marmot, on a marmot or you. I'll search the trees to the west. The eastern part of the forest is all yours. Good luck. You know, this incline. Oh, I can. That's nice. Squeak. Jordan nimbly evades her grasp once more, disappearing into the trees. Squeak, squeak. More prepared for its speed this time, you su succeed in closing the sack over the elusive quarry. Alright, before I do anything. These pests.
I can get the one ether card on this level. I need no new regular computer speakers because I could tell because on the same mount on Elegance when I was running through this the first time, it sounded weird and I figured it out because I can hear each step like the right one hits hits the ground as the chunk. I can hear it in my or left one. You know what I mean? I can hear it in my left ear and then when the other one hits, I get in the right ear, so it goes back and forth. But because one of my speakers isn't working quite right, and I write that the sound's not coming out of it, it sounded weird. <laughs> it doesn't hear a chunk, chunk, the chunk, 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 chunk. So, it sounds better when I got the headphones on, so I need new computer speakers. Hi, Richardo. Sorry if I missed you early. You said that a while ago. How did you fare? I tracked down three of the pack, which leaves one accounted for. Yeah, I got one. Ah, there's the old odd marmot out. Wait here a moment while I put our friend in a holding cage. Thankfully, the marmots uh, seem to be unharmed. They be they held up up well in isolation, but it's much too soon to release them. It's a good thing we were able to recapture them so swiftly. You may have my thanks. What will you do with the marmots now? That's for the forum to decide. They're the guiding authority behind labyrinths, after all, and this job was but one small part of their great inventory there. Suitable for consumption, easy to breed, those are the two conditions I was given for the stock I was instructed to procure. I don't know about the formulas planned for these creatures, but at the very least, I doubt they're served for dinner today or tomorrow. There you are, Amigos. This is the cleaner you mentioned, the one who was looking for lost moments. Interesting company you keep, friend. Who are you folk, anyways? I'm Kryle, the students of Baldessian. These others are my associates. Truth be told, the form's decisions of late are not entirely well with us. That is why we made the uh, descent into Labyrinthos. Hope that by seeing the decisions put into action, we might fully understand their reasoning. Wise and practical. Never hurts to try and uh, gain a broader perspective, does it? Anyway, duty calls. Other animals to capture and enclosures to empty. Once again, I'm sorry I can't offer you more for, my, for your services. I can't do his voice. But I'm doing my best bet. Did you learn anything from your friend there? So you confirm that the order of this ambitious operation did indeed come directly from the Forum. However, the Gleaners may have not informed of its purpose. It's to say that I'd say that fits with everything else we encountered. We've also discovered from the, when the operation. I'm going to stop this sort of advance. The seasoned travelers, the Gleaners, keep abreast of news from every corner of the world out of necessity. Thus am I inclined to to trust that their calendar of events is accurate. Altogether, I was given the distinct impression that this undertaking was a sudden and unexpected development. Yet, I find it hard to believe that such a comprehensive restructuring of Labyrinthos and its archives could have been planned in so brief a window. 
Nay, this plan was long in the making. They were but waiting, waiting the right time to put it into effect. And the Telofro's declaration was what set it all in motion. Seems likely, but let us not leap to conclusions as yet. For the moment, I suggest we conduct a wider investigation of Labyrinthos. The more facilities we visit, the more pieces of the puzzle we stand to find. In that case, how about we head to Archeon? From there we can reach the lower... Ryle, what's wrong? I'm fine, truly. Sudden descent has left me a bit with a headache, that's all. Nothing that will stop me from soldiering on. Let's be about it then. At least allow me to take the lead. I'm fairly certain I remember the way to the Archeon. We followed the path east through the forest where they were chasing after that, that mouse, or marmot, was it? Anyway, it is the trolls you need to watch out for. That's okay, I ran into a couple. I've, I can take care of them. Keep to the road and everything will be fine. Don't worry about me, I'm hale and healthy. In fact, I'm beginning to suspect that... Hey, let's discuss this later. The investigation demands our undivided attention. This is the foremost material archive of this of in Shalian. I would love to explore its treasures shelf by shelf, but I fear we have little time for such indulgences. Will you caught in an, in the mist on your way here? The sprays keep the, the air humid, so they... Ha Habitat feels as close as possible to a natural forest. Behold the Archeon. As Numenon serves as La uh, Charlene's literary archive, so does the structure house the city's wealth of material data. The architecture, too, is similar. This building you see is merely the upper entrance, an access point to the vaults carved into the cliffside itself. Within these vast rooms are stored countless samples and specimens, as well as the detailed records which describe them. In manner of speaking, the Archeon serves a physical history of Darlene's unwavering dedication to the accumulation of knowledge. Well, we won't learn anything from va value standing out here. Let us proceed into the main building and speak with the custodian. Quick bro keep. Episode trader.
Greetings. We are here to peruse the Archean's vaults. Peruse? You are clearly not gleaners, then. Might I ask your affiliation? We belong to the students of Balthusian, but is that relevant? I have been given to believe the vaults, well, those open to the public at least, were open to the public. Oh, nearly yes, but it would be that would be the case. At present, however, access is restricted. Only persons directly involved in the reorganization efforts are permitted to enter. Not us, then. I suppose we better move move along to another facility. This building has a lift which connects to the middle tier, yes? Might we at least make use of that? That service has also been suspended, I'm afraid, for, for the time being. Priority has been given over to the convenience of inventory. What? Is this as far as we can go? I apologize for the inconvenience. Please come again after our restructuring operation is concluded. That time would be too late. We're so close to getting answers. We need to rethink our approach. Let us step outside for the moment, shall we? Students of Baldessian. <gasps> I just realized something. We are at an impasse, so there are no other leads we would like to peruse. I would, I should like to peruse this one further. I doubt our, our stone-faced custodian be swayed by the heartfelt pleas. Must seek another means to access the lower levels. It is likely that the people in the area are involved in the restructuring in one way or another. We ought to integrate ourselves. We might allow, allow us to accompany them in the lift. Let us ask around. Surely somebody is in need of strong backs to lighten the load? Am I taking a lift? Oh no, um, we're just students. We we won't let us into the Arcane even if we... Though we found... Actually, we have no idea what we found. There's no record of such creature anywhere. It was wandering around tranquility, and so, and so we thought to donate it to the vaults. Squeal, squeal! Ah, it's a little squeal, don't you think? Anyway, I su suppose we'd like to take care, care of it until the Arcane is open again. What's that? Take you down to the lift with me? Sorry, but not a chance. I've been up and down all day, and only now have I found a spare moment to rest. I did see a gleaner fellow heading out, out the gate there, though. Children in a large pack. Engaged in some manner of task. Maybe he'd be headed down below but after he's done with whatever he's doing. Or when Garish stays around. Oh, it's Arendelle. 
Right, I'm fighting it away. Ah, see you again. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm in the middle of another task. Cloud can you need to capture her close, very close. Ah, I can help you out with that. Huh? You wish to help me with this too? You spend your time in unusual ways, my friend. Still, two hunters are generally better than one. Very well. The canal here is a common gathering spot for birds of all kinds, but the one I'm after today is the hornbill. Its feathers are green and its cry is a distinctive caw. I'm going to let it out and shoot it with this sleeping dart. The effects are short lived, so I'll lie and wait down the riverbank to claim a quarry. Be sure to hit the right one. Shooting minigame. Green feathers. Kaka. Bosk. Kaka. Ah. Ah. There we go. We don't have an auto. Let's turn the other bag on. Nicely done. Let me trust this one up, and I'll make my way over to you. you are. Any new revelations? So you met with that gleaner again, this time to capture a hornbill. I understand catching and bringing in creatures from the outside, but what's the point of chasing after ones already here? Oh, it's a simple thing, really. Occasionally, we remove specimens no longer needed for study, or those we've had difficulty raising. But we can't simply turn them loose. Safely returning such creatures to their native habitats is another facet of a cleaner's duties. But not in this case, I'm afraid. I've been asked to bring the bird below. The restricted section in the lower levels of Labyrinthos. Open only to a select few researchers hand-picked by the Forum. The projects down there are the subject of rumor and hearsay. Forbidden magics. Advanced technologies that can never be allowed to fall into outside hands. Even Archons are not privy to the truth. Those who are, the researchers involved in this secretive work are not permitted to walk freely in the city and are instead required to live in isolated quarters. What could a facility subject to such strict security protocols possibly need with a hornbill? An, an experiment? Possibly. I wasn't afforded an explanation. But judging by the requisition list given to me and my colleagues, I doubt it's for any kind of advanced research. I'd be more inclined to believe we were making preparations to migrate to the south. Merasidio, or thereabouts. 
What? Why would you say that? Much of the flora and fauna we were asked to procure could serve as reliable sources of sustenance. They're comparatively hardy species, too, able to endure harsh climates. And among them are specimens known to be effective in improving soil quality and purifying water. When you put it that way, migration does sound like a reasonable assumption. That's all it is, though. An assumption. Through our tasks, we gleaners glimpse only bits and pieces of the forum's plans. Our prime concern is that our requisitions, be they living or otherwise, are properly preserved for the knowledge of future generations. Now, I really must be going. I regret that I cannot reward you as you deserve. Perhaps you might reward us after a fashion then. It is imperative that we reach the lower levels. And seeing as you are already set to descend with your assigned cargo, mayhap we could accompany you as your assistants. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Once the animals have been prepared for transport, we send them down separately via the lift. I will, of course, follow after to make my report, but I can hardly pass you off as porters when there's nothing left to carry. Indeed. Pray forget I said anything. How do you feel about climbing? If you've strength and the courage to brave it, then there is another way down. This path leads to the 33rd facet, a mine shaft excavated during one of our expansions of Labyrinthos. While I cannot guarantee that the passage is safe to traverse, it should provide access to the medial circuit below. I never even knew such a place existed. Thank you. This is the perfect solution. You're quite welcome. But consider yourselves warned. If the going proves too treacherous, you'd do well to turn back. I bid you good day. Mary well, turning back, back is hardly an option. Not when we've come this far. Let's go and take a look at this mine shaft. Those people who use flying, uh, use obviously flying things to move along the ground. It's one of the reasons why, instead of using my hippogriff that I that I ha have, I use my magitek armor because usually when you see these, these are on the ground. Fortunately, like when they are in there, they do have like a fight mode, but so it doesn't look so awkward. But at least this looks appropriate for being on the ground. Well, I guess. I never would have noticed this cave on my own. Thanks to Scholar that Aaron Val knew of it, and you are there to per persuade him to share. I took a quick peek inside. It's awfully dark in there. The media circuit, which Erinvel mentions, the tier directly below us. Unlike the lowest levels of the Labyrinthos, it's, with its rigid security, one can usually roam the middle layer quite freely. Let us see what we might find. This must be it, the entrance to the mineshaft. It is faint, but I hear something moving within. Creatures home there, there by the researchers, you think? Well, slavery and beasts aside, we will need to, to watch our footing. We should tighten our straps and make sure... Make such... 
uh, straps and such before we continue. I can read, really, again. Darn it. You know, my inventory is not awful. Assuming everyone's tightened their straps and checked their gear, then I say we head on in. Given the terrain ahead, though, it might be wise to leave some distance between us. Don't want to be stumbling over each other if it comes to a fight. Take it slow and don't forget to check your surroundings from time to time. We'll meet up again at the other's end of the tunnel. One thing that drives me nuts about this quest is look at the map here. So they have this and they have this. We're trying to get to here in the end. And the route they have for the quest is to go through the far, the long way around. I don't get it. And besides the fact that, that there, there's an either current right here. <laughs> I will... Oh, I will frequently say Aether Current instead of Ether Current. Because it starts with an A. But I want to say the AE. Like that, that whenever you see it like that combined character I think it's pronounced uh pronounced a The two stopping points. See, there's that other tunnel.
was really a shaft. The mine shaft was infested by mithril caps. Such some sort of research project, I wonder. I suppose they are most unusual creatures. Why did they develop such long limbs when all they do is shuffle about narrow tunnels? Emma Ghost, did you know Kryle almost took a tumble back there? She can't possibly be dizzy from still be dizzy from the lift. I was being careful, I swear. The slope was steeper than I thought, and I lost my footing for a moment, that's all. I'm not injured if you don't don't count my pride. Everyone seems to have made it through without incident. Nothing of consequence, at least. And as promised, the tunnel has delivered us to the medial circuit. As I recall, this tier is where they keep a wide variety of samples for agricultural production. If Aronville's assumption holds true, the specimens are being collected in preparation for a great migration, uh, then we should see evidence of such plans in the area's research project. Let's follow the path to the nearest farming facility and see what they, we see. Ah, huh. know where we are. Something you're not. Labyrinthos is a host of wide variety of vegetation, which allows us to conduct studies on cultivation methods utilized in foreign lands. And it is this facility which coordinates and oversees th those efforts. The fruits of their research go to feed the Labyrinthos colleagues. Or oh, sorry, yeah. More notable successes uh, might make it to the Agora, a uh, food so exotic you'll be hard-pressed to guess their origin, let alone how they might taste. Indeed, mystery vegetables without a name, only a list of nutritional benefits scribbled on a card. Mm. I see no gleaners here about, yet the these workers seem to share that same sense of urgency. It is possible they know something of the form's plans and their underlying motivations. Uh, worth looking into, wouldn't you say? You way you can coax from the workers. The rest of us will do the same and cast or cast about for useful clues. Ah, uh, hello there. No one expecting visitors, not with the use of the lift being restricted. How did you make it down here, anyways? Oh, we took a mine shaft. Mine shaft, you say? Well, much harder your soul than I. Under normal circumstances, we reward such tenacity with a guided tour of the fields, but I'm afraid the forum has this filling order this uh, mom long. Massive yet detailed re requests. Literal. Wagon loans of crop samples and hardly any time to put them together. When I first heard of this grand reorganization, I assumed we would be shuffling around old stock to make room for the new. Then came the orders of ridiculous quantities of seeds we already thoroughly researched. Passing strange, eh? I pressed for an explanation and was met with the vague assurances that all would be revealed in due course. Not the most satisfying answer.
You have a lot to be taken taken down below. Hold on, I can carry and then some. Most of our stock is sent off via the cargo list, and some have been your mark for area transport. It's a stack of crates atop the hill over there. Got holding the lot, lot up that scope was a job and a half. Crops are we raising? Well, as you see, this one is a variety of grape. It only needs a good source of sunlight to grow, and the conditions are nothing short of perfect. Hardly a surprising given that it's native to a particular locale in a very place based upon which Labyrinthos was modeled, a region in the south of Ilzabad. It boasts a remarkable habitat diversity, allowing for a myriad of flora and fauna to thrive. Chilly peaks in the north give away to swaths of temperate plains, which in turn transition to hot, humid coastline. Such bountiful territories as ever contested, as you might expect, used to be called Corvus before the Imperials renamed it Locus Amernus. The form saw it not as a prize, however, as the researcher's ideal environment, one whose climates we strove to recreate within the confines of Labyrinthos, is since confined provided a rich foundation of countless experiments and cultivation. All right, let's go check on those stack boxes. Do we uh, avoid the stray tomato, the stray onion, the stray corgan? Mm, pretty flowers. Be close. Label on these crates tell the story of their contents, bundles of common seeds and saplings, uh, accompanied by sheaves of reports. Hard to look away, isn't it? But they're more than pretty flowers. Heart blooms are attuned to ambient emotion. You don't seem convinced, but believe me, it's true. This ashen grey, for instance, it mirrors the anxiety and urgency of those working nearby as they rush to fulfill sudden orders. Intense feelings like those spur the petals to change colour. Bright glowing hues in the presence of joy. Dark, subdued shades for frustration or despair. Yet even with the collected wisdom of Charlian at our disposal, we've yet to identify the underlying principle of this empathic effect. And there are other mysteries besides. Although the flower is extraordinarily long-lived, its low reproductive rate has made it difficult to find younger populations growing in the wild. With too few sightings to map its distribution, and no closely related species to track, we've been unable to pinpoint its land of origin. <laughs> to further complicate matters, every culture, even dimly aware of its existence, has given it a different name and mythos. Our attempts to study it via the historical record have been an exercise in frustration. As an avid botanist myself, I should one day like to unravel the heart bloom secrets. But I'm afraid other duties must take precedence. I will leave you to your thoughts.
Have you learned aught of interest? A flower that reacts to one's feelings. Strange. I must say, I have never heard of such a thing. This is all very fascinating. But as it stands, we fail to gain any significant insight into the forum's undertaking. Indeed. While there is certainly enough activity to support Erinville's supposition that a priority has been placed on improving food production, and fortunately for our investigation, these workers were never informed as to how their duties serve the master plan. Oh, if only we could interrogate the forum members directly. Isn't that the entrance to the arcade? Erinville. A little difficult to tell from here, but, but I think you're right. He did say he was coming down to make his report. Erinville receives his orders from the Forum. Would it not follow, then, that the superior to whom he reports is a Forum member, or at least a close associate? You mean to eavesdrop on their conversation? <laughs> what of the risks? Hours alone to bear. We won't interfere with Erinville's work, nor will he be implicated as an accomplice. If you're not comfortable taking part, I can do this alone. Nay. I said myself that I wished to know Father's intentions. And no answers will be forthcoming should we simply ask nicely. We can apologize later, should it come to it. Right now, we need every crumb of information we can get our hands on. Consequences be damned. It might be best if you came along as well. In fact, we should all... Cryer? certainly sounds like a plan. I'm glad you agree. Quickly! Erinville is on the move. We need to get closer before we lose him. reach you. Kyle's still feeling unwell. We've never see seen her so distracted. Keep an eye on her, but keep moving too. We cannot let our quarry slip away. Erinfell is heading westward along the path of away from the Archeum. We can, come. We st we can still catch him. I'm gonna take a shortcut. Oh, wrong route. Yeah, I'm gonna go this one. So, in Labyrinthos, I have three. Oh. 
I have three of five because there's ten, but as with pretty much every expansion, this part we can't get to till later in the story. So we can only get five. We can only get half of it. And then eventually we will have a uh, at least one or two uh, actually I think it's just one uh, it's the current quest still hear it. We've fallen too far behind in this damn, damn miss. Won't help matters. It seems you should this wish us to have a word with us. One moment, I have an idea. Memory serves that colossal wall like structure is logicum logisticum beta, one of Labyrinth's climate control centers. But it should have its own this, which with which one can access the upper or lower lower tiers. Aye, if I were an agent of the forum, I would make it make for a convenient meeting place. But even if it happened to find Ernval in the company of said agent, we cannot expect them to really Reveal issues with ones as we nonchalantly stroll past. Nay, we shall have to. We shall have to remain undetected. Only Graha and his vanish spell are here. Oh, but there are other ways to, of turning invisible. Hippity hop, my little toads. Goodness! I'm accustomed to turning configuration. Very not, it will wear off with the passage of time. I suggest you and your green companions hop along and catch up with Arnveld. Should you feel the magic fading, return to me and I will refresh the enchantment. Um. What am I to do in the meantime? Wait here with me. In your current state of mind, you are likely to leap into the jaws of a predator as you would learn anything of note. Mm. <laughs> Which reminds me, where are the creatures hereabouts in that form you are essentially defenseless? You have, cha you have changed into a toad. Must remain transfigured in order to progress with question detectives. You will return with your transfigured status if you move move too far away. Look, in, away, look to your map for the transfiguration area of effect. Speak with Shistola to restore or prolong the transformation. Basically, as long as I'm in that pink area. Pretty big area, that's fine. How long can I be transfigured? 29 minutes! I got plenty of time. Oh, wait, let's talk to Alpha Toad. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Alpha Toad and Ali Toad are now a company. <laughs> Keep them at your side in order to be a crest of death. <laughs> Alpha Toad and Ali Toad. You can leave your quest when you spy by entering a different area, putting too much difference between yours, speaking with them and selecting the option to part ways. You wish to have your companions join you again, return and speak with them at the original location. Don't worry, we got a chocobo. We got two chocobos. We got a mechanical alpha. And we got my chocobo to, to take care of us. We're, we're totally protected.
Ah. Oh, my targets. Later. Hey, I never saw the caribou. What is it? Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. I like to turn to face north. Perhaps he's suggesting you should cross the bridge. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Alpha Toad attempts and fails to shake his head, but nonetheless understand that he's telling you that this is the wrong way. I think I was going the right way before. I trust you will find your compensation to be more than satisfactory. We wish to make clear that we are pleased with the efficiency and thoroughness of your work. So much so that we have come bearing new tasks in need of your competent hand. Another lengthy list. If I may speak frankly, the cleaners have been pushed to the point of collapse by your unending demands. We are not familiars to be exploited. We are Charlie and scholars, and we deserve an explanation for this unseemly treatment. What warrants such urgency? In an age long past, Charlian was charged with a momentous duty. And now that word of the final days hangs heavy in the air, the time has come for us to fulfill that charge. I can say no more, but I promise you this. All will be revealed in due course. And when it has, you will understand that your toil was in service to the greatest good. Then I will do your bidding, for now. But unless you wish the cleaners to rise up in protest, I advise you to offer tangible improvements for our working conditions. Your promised revelation does nothing to address present circumstances. A fair point. Your concerns will be conveyed to the Forum. I hope that was informative. You may consider my debt to you repaid in full. While I do have my reservations about the Forum, I want to believe that they have our best interests at heart. Which is why I'm reassured that you're busy sniffing out the truth of things. We can ill afford to place all our eggs in one basket, this master plan of theirs.
without first understanding the risks involved. Wait! How did you know it was us? If you mean to impersonate a toad, try studying the real thing. And don't try to fool an expert. Fair point. I suppose we should, we should have known Aglino, who specializes in animal procurement, would not be so easily deceived, but he seemed inclined to put his trust in us all the same. More importantly, perhaps we discovered a new piece of the puzzle. This momentous duty the poor major mentioned. Charlie has been called call to action, and that the Lofroy Declaration was the catalyst. Whatever ch charge it is they hope to fulfill, they deem it of sufficient importance to disrupt all of the labyrinthos. Not to mention nor Ilzia's request for aid. Duty could warrant the direct involvement of the form in the commitment of all of its resources. Judging from what we just heard, one of the gleaners has offered were offered any kind of explanation. At this point, it seems abundantly clear that we learn nothing new from pressing them further. We should head back to Yishtola and Kryo for the moment. See what they think about this. All right. So before we go back to Yishtola and uh, Kryo, let's uh. Hit the current. We had out here. Let me I need to just get one luncheon toad. But I have four and one more and i believe yep got a lost little troll that little quest line is actually kind of cool it just happens on my route there's one of those toads Three sacks of nuts. I got four lunch and toad skins. Nice. the Aether Currents. It's funny how normal this forest seems now. As a toad, it was all so much more ominous and threatening. Where's Cryo? 
Welcome back. I trust you found Aaron involved then? Bill? Interesting. I had a feeling you had learned something important, even if it's something that's simply confirmation that no one knows such a thing. We should share this with Crowell, then discuss how, how we proceed. Assuming you can find her back at the short farm, she is still behaving oddly, so I bade her return and rest there. Perhaps not the best decision in hindsight. Would you mind checking near those flowers you were so trans by? The rest of us will survey the more distant areas, just in case. I'm going to work on continuing the story, not doing the, uh, the <coughs> ether I quest, or the, uh, the quest yet. I'll get to it. Ah, oh, man. Don't give me like like this. Better be fine once I enter, enter this cutscene. you the spell will keep it from wilting she said you would need it for the journey ahead will you speak with her now i cannot hope to match minfilia's clarity of course but She has lent me her body for only a moment. 
Just as I could not save the first from the flood of light, it has become arduous for me to interact with the physical world without assistance. Though I might converse with you for a time, the incorporeal form I assumed on the ship would be incapable of casting even the simplest enchantment. It is in the depths of the ethereal sea, the place to which all life returns, where my influence is greatest. After Menphilia's sacrifice on the first, it was to the sea, here in the source, where I ferried her soul. I wished that gentle spirit to find rest in the world she loved so well. And another who may yet have a part to play, though that will depend on you. Take the flower, walk free, for you are free to go where you wish, to believe what you will. That bloom will be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. In darkness, seek joy, surrender not to sadness, and see beyond despair. Walk free and bear the light for others to follow. Together, raise it aloft and let it shine till the end, blinding and radiant. was all too brief. Already she seems so far away. Ah, <sighs> my apologies if I startled you. Ever since we began our descent into Labyrinthos, I had sensed another's will, straining to reach out. Even with my particular talents, though, I was unable to make a connection at first, so weak and tenuous it was. Once I took hold of that wispy thread, imagine my surprise to discover it was Heidelin herself. Needless to say, it seemed wise to learn what we could before letting go. Her answers were more cryptic than I would have liked. But at least she left us with a guide of sorts, that unusual flower. <laughs> yes, we are definitely making progress. You can't be serious! We've done nothing wrong! What business has the Forum with us? Obstruction and suppression, apparently. Mistress Baldessian, our records show you facilitated the Scion's entrance into Charlian by claiming them as assistants for your organization. We are aware of your investigations. After alerting the major institutions to the presence of potential troublemakers, we received word from an Archean custodian. A group operating under the auspices of the students, skulking about Labyrinthos and engaging in clandestine behavior. Clandestine? We may not have entered Charlian as scions, but we did naught to conceal our identities. Our only purpose in this city is to seek the truth. I can think of no reason why our actions should warrant the Forum's intervention. It is not our way to discourage the pursuit of knowledge. 
but the timing of such pursuits must be considered, not to mention their potential impact. With the world in chaos, we, the true caretakers of wisdom, have committed ourselves to an undertaking that demands the utmost discretion. And we will not risk its success by turning a blind eye to disruptive foreign elements in our midst. What then is to be our fate? Will you put us on a ship back to Eorzea? The Forum will convene to examine your case. The results of said inquiry will determine your future in this city. As for your absent companion, he has already been detained. Graha! But why? Is reading a crime now, too? Reading is encouraged, celebrated even. Not, however, of the volumes shelved in the restricted section of the library. Refusing to comply will only make matters worse. Let us instead treat this as an opportunity to open a dialogue with the Forum. Silence is often one's best defense. I would advise against prolonging the proceedings with frivolous discourse. But enough. This is not the place for debate. The Rostra await. Forgive me. I was careless. We would have been detained regardless. This way, at least, we managed to stay together. I trust your time within the Forbidden Archives was well spent. The Forum will come to order! This inquiry is now in session. As Speaker-elect, I will be presiding over the day's proceedings. Master Fortuner, would you be so kind as to restate the matter which compelled you to summon your colleagues with such urgency? As you are all aware, we recently denied Eorzea's request for Charlian assistance. Since then, certain individuals dissatisfied with our decision have taken it upon themselves to interfere with our work. They entered our nation masquerading as associates of the students of Baldessian, but these malcontents are better known as the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. These militants wield influence with both the Eorzean and Eastern alliances, and are inextricably involved with the crises presently afflicting the world at large. Loose in our city, these warmongers sought to meddle with and expose matters of state secret. What are they if not a dire threat to be expelled? You have tarnished the good name of the students. Galuf would be ashamed. Galuf Baldessian was never one to forsake his fellow man. Even
Even if this nation closed every door and retreated from the world, he would have found a way to help the Scions, help every soul of this star fight back against the coming doom. A terrible enemy stands poised to lay waste to all we hold dear. In the face of such madness, Eorzea reached out to Charlian, a respected ally, in the hopes of forming a united front. Was your curt dismissal truly the best you could offer? Or are you so preoccupied with your momentous duty of an age long past that even the end of the world is unworthy of your attention? Whence came this revelation? From the mouth of a forum member within fortuitous earshot. Then it seems your findings support my own. The reason I visited the restricted shelves was to study records of the Forum's policy-making process. To better understand the historical trends underlying their most major decisions. At first glance, the positions of neutrality in war and the accumulation of knowledge above all else appear constant and consistent, the unchanging pillars of Charlian society. And once upon a time I might have left it at that. These days, however, I am more attuned to the subtleties of governance, and so I noticed something... odd. From a particular point in time, the purpose of these policies shifted. No longer was knowledge preserved for the benefit of society. Rather, society was to be gradually reshaped to ensure the preservation of knowledge. The most conspicuous and telling change was the one which befell Labyrinthos. Once little more than an oversized storehouse, an enormous allocation of funds saw it transformed into an advanced research and archival facility. I also discovered a fascinating account on the finances of our Dravanian colony. The settlement attracted students from far and wide, and the connections and tuition fees thus acquired were funneled into further improvements for the archives. Now, there is no question that our nation's progress is tied to the acquisition of wisdom. Nevertheless, the vast resources diverted for this purpose borders on the obscene. But returning to the matter of when, our change in course appears to have been made some 270 years ago. The very same period when Charlian scholars in the hinterlands began a formal study of the ethereal sea. You found something, did you not? And whatever it was, gave rise to your oh-so-important duty. Mind your tongue, Archon. If you had seen... Yes. We are bound by a duty we cannot ignore. Knowing this, what would you have us do? Abandon our vital work and join you on the field of battle? We will never choose the way of the sword. We will fulfill our mission not through strife and bloodshed, but survival. Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must, then. But we Scions will fight until the heavens fall, until our last breath.
Such misguided zeal. Father, I... Master Fortuno. I fail to understand the stance you have elected to take. But by the same token, I have yet to find a compelling argument to counter the challenge you put to us in Gradania. Still, in the midst of my uncertainty, I must trust in myself to do what is right, as others have chosen to trust in me. So I will continue, as I always have, weighing the consequences of my every action, and allowing my hope for the future to inform my decisions. That's quite enough. Have you all forgotten the reason for this assembly? Skolok Montashane. He's the head of the studium and an old friend of my grandfather's. Honestly, every discussion devolves into some interminable debate. Terrible habit. Let's return to the topic at hand, hmm? By their own admission, these Scions have resolved to fight alongside the Eorzean nations against the doom which Swift approaches. But there exists no evidence of an attempt to incite our citizens to do the same. Furthermore, while our decision may well have been the correct one, we cannot simply bull our way through these disagreements without inviting doubts or objections. Put yourselves in their place. Who among you would leave a tome unopened if an elder forbid you read it with no reason given? Now, if we're to quell further discontent, then we must conclude this matter with a fair and even hand. Wise man. Order. We will have order. Master Montashane raises some valid points. Keeping such concerns in mind, I propose we enforce the following measures. Until further notice, the students of Baldessian are to cease any and all activities within the domain of Charlian. You will also refrain from any further investigation into the Forum's decisions and duties. Failure to comply with these restrictions will result in the immediate expulsion of your Scion Associates. Let us put this judgment to a vote. All in favor, raise your hand. I count 51 for and 48 against. The proposal is passed. Students, Scions, you have heard the Forum's judgment. Pray abide by it, or face the consequences. Honoured members, I thank you for your time. This inquiry is concluded. Well, that was lucky. Well, at least we've been allowed to remain in the city. 
And our endless in- investigations are not in vain. We now know that this mysterious duty of theirs began when whenever the fallen discovered it in the ethereal sea. With our freedom so sorely cur- curtailed, however, we will struggle to learn aught more of substance here in shopping. Alright. <clears throat> Uh, I'm gonna go kill a caribou. In two of them. Back to Reaper for this. I'm going this way for reasons. Hmm. There they are. There's a fate here too. Who's really doing it? There's a lot there. Let's just kill the caribou and be done with it. Oh, my caribou, the other things are in Thavnir, so. We want to talk about this one. The overall picture has grown clear, yes, but in spite of the phone being so manly vague about their duty of theirs, why are they so reluctant to explain their actions in plain words? A survival come what may, if father's work so vital that takes precedence over his own family. Afano, Alize, it is you. When I heard you have been dragged before the forum, I came as swiftly as I could. I'm so glad they allowed you to stay. M mother Melian Slavia at your service. And you fine people must be the science of the seventh dawn. How lovely it is to finally meet you. Uh, huh? What? <laughs> Mother, please. We don't wish to make things difficult for you. Word reaches father that you were here. Oh, bother that. Am I to be chastised for speaking to my own children? 
I'm well aware that you and Master Fulchenot are not on the best terms at the moment. I was absolutely desperate to see my darlings again. You will come to buy the house, won't you? I have gifts waiting. The timing couldn't be better. As matters stand, we shan't be going anywhere unless we discuss matters with Tengren's group and reconsider our options. Go visit your home. We'll be back at the Annex when you're ready to rejoin us. I'm not so sure we... Emigos, what do you think? <gasps> Emigos? The Emigos? Windroar? What a splendid day this is going to be. Champion of Aeosia. I insist that you join us. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, but you must be quick about it. Not not for my own benefit, but should my husband return to find you enjoying our hospitality, your servants will be made to suffer the consequences. Emigos, if you would be so kind as to ask all my children to the estate. And there, and then she was gone. With her... And with her, any opportunity to protest. Indeed, the matter is settled. Enjoy yourselves, you three. <laughs> I apologize, my mother is not one to take no for an answer. Still, I'm glad, relieved even, to see her in such high spirits. What say you, Amagos? Though it seems we shall have little enough time to enjoy it, will you accompany us to our visit home? Fine. If we're going, then let us get this over with, but be sure to stay in the entrance hall. No peeking in our private chambers. Thank you very much. Well, why ever not? The room is always perfectly neat and tidy. Anyone? Everyone has things they'd rather keep to themselves, don't they? Cherish mementos you wouldn't bring yourself to throw away childhood toys? Um, I mean, uh, gah, never mind. Levia Estate is that way, straight down the stairs. Come on. Uh, you all, uh, the, these people are accompanying you. I have this feeling that I don't want to be going to the Olivia Estate in my Reaper outfit. When Alize and I were little, the bridge was as far as, far as we were permitted to wander alone. I say alone, but my mother or servants always somewhere nearby, keeping a watchful eye. And now look at us, traveling to different continents, different worlds even. As children, Alfredo and I would often visit here and for our father to come home from work. It must have been a day when his meetings ran long, because I remember growing restless and leaning over the railing to watch the water rush by. Father, of course, arrived at the exact moment, compounding down the path in panic, crying out my name. There was a... There it is! Okay. And here you are at last. Please do come in. Welcome, Welcome home, my lady. lady. A selection of it. What? What are you gawping at? Hmm. Iron headquarters <laughs> seems squalid indeed. Quite fond of the rising stones.
Lord Fortuno is not to hear of this visit. And I should also like the children to have their gifts, ere my husband makes his return. As you wish, my lady. Master Alfno, Mistress Alice, if you'd accompany me upstairs. We shan't be long. The twins have been sending letters home from time to time, recounting their latest adventures. I am sure they withhold certain details, of course, if only to keep me from worrying. Yet a mother worries all the same. In the early days especially, I tried to support them as best I could, sending the Scion's coin and other such donations. Fortunately, they have found the strength to overcome adversity time and time again. Their words grow more confident with every letter, their depictions more vivid. The triumphs and defeats, the joys and sorrows, it is clear that they have come to find value in every experience. But of those they treasure most, it would seem that meeting you might be the most impactful. Why, since that fateful day, I do believe there has not been a single missive in which you were not mentioned by name. <laughs> it is plain they care for you. And I am glad they have such a steadfast companion watching over them. Under normal circumstances, I would offer you tea, but alas, these are anything but. In any event, why don't you keep me company whilst we await my children's return? Perhaps you might regale me with a tale or two of your exploits. Of their happy moments with the twins, maybe. When you mentioned gifts, I wasn't sure what to expect. Mother, I. How can she fight in those heels? Oh, look how well it fits you. And the style is to your liking. It's perfect. Exactly what I would have chosen. But please, tell me you had something different made for Alphano. <laughs> Naturally. You are hardly little children anymore. And while I shall miss dressing you in those precious matching outfits, I must respect the individuals you have grown to become. See for yourself. Thank you for the splendid clothes, Mother. Stylish, comfortable, and eminently practical. I am so glad you like them. They are, however, missing one final touch. If you'd allow me, Master Alphano. tools of the trade they belonged to your father though he may as well be chained to his desk these days as a student he was often called upon to venture into the field he wielded those armaments 
both to heal and to harm in no few battles. None so fierce as those you two have braved, perhaps, but battles nonetheless. Thus did I pull them out of storage, to show you that he was not always the man who stands in vehement opposition to you now. <laughs> and also because it would be a terrible waste of ridiculously expensive House Leveilleur commissioned artistry. Wink. I am told these devices are quite difficult to master. But someone of your extensive experience should soon have them darting about with grace and aplomb. May the wisdom in that crystal serve you well. And please, Try to find common ground with your father, that you might come and go without need for this awful subterfuge. We will, mother. I promise. My final gifts to you, before you run off, are an observation and a suggestion. Firstly, Fortuno has ever been a serious man, but it was only after you were born that he truly lost himself in his work. I may not know the forum's inner workings, but I know your father's. The timing of that change in him holds some significance. Secondly, do not seek to best your father with words. Far better that you simply show him let him discover the merit of your actions after they cannot be undone. <laughs> oh, mother. We shall take your wisdom to heart. Thank you again for these gifts, and farewell for now. Safe travels, my children. Eat well, stay warm, and keep your friends close. Two sages and a red mage. Or two red mages and a sage. Hey, nice new list. Right. Thank you for indulging Mother's request. I can see meant a lot to her. And I... I uh, shall refrain from inquiring as to the content of your private conversation. Our visit was all too brief. For now, however, it will have to suffice, as well these tokens of home that we carry with us. These gifts will help us remember who we are and whence we come. Game. But enough sentimentality. Let us return to the Annex and rejoin our companions. Alright, brief detour. I need, I need to get this. Let's see log. Sanjin. Do a quick reaper change to kind of boost me along. Ah! It wasn't this one, it was that one. Ah!
I, I, I just want the thing. Just, just give me the thing. Here we are. Thank you. Alright. We're gonna cheat. <laughs> just teleport to the other shard. <laughs> I'm already here in Charlene. <laughs> I'm teleporting to Charlene. Send me Gale worth well spent. Alright. <laughs> I'm all testing. <laughs> this is up a save. your time with the love yours, I hope. I would ask how the twins fare, but their new outfits tell the tale. I only hope you can help them to reconcile with their father and they might return home one day with their heads held high. In the meantime, we wage ev we edge ever closer to the secret that forms strives to hide, and the flower bequeathed to you by Heidelin is sure to guide us going forward. I'm confident that once you've scattered out the situation in Thavnir, we'll be well equipped to plot out our next move. All right, so this is a good actual stopping point. Uh, I will Reaper and Thavnir, uh, but I'm gonna stop here just because it's a good, good cut. I want to stop in the middle of Thavnir when I only have about a half an hour left of what I usually do, two and a, two, two and a half hours. The goal, five hours of total. But this is a little short. Four and a half hours, but that's okay. We'll come back to this next time. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll probably be, I, I might even be back tomorrow on Christmas Day, so celebrate Christmas with me with playing some Final Fantasy. <laughs>